the British cactus and succulent society. Whoa. So today I want to introduce to you my favourite genus, which is Ilostera. Come with me into the greenhouse. So, as we look down here, many of these orange and red flowered plants are Ilosteras. We can really divide them into two sorts. Ilosteras, in the strict sense, which tend to be fat, round bodied plants, and then other Ilosteras, which are more finger shaped and are in the subgenus Media labivia. So let's have a look first at some of the plants that are in the Ilostera subgenus. The one with the very pink flower there is Ilostera biningiana. There's a whole set of forms here which are basically Ilostera robustispina and closely related plants. If we move on, there's Ilostera capariana. And Ilostra, well, I'm not quite sure what to call this. Nogalensis, perhaps, or Spinosissima. And then there's Ilostra archibiningiana there. And then as we move down, we come to plants like Ilostra muscular. And one of my favourites, which is this very soft spined Ilostra albipylosa. There's one or two others here. There's Ilostra sumayana and a couple of different fl coloured flowers on Ilostra flavistyla. Okay, we can go back up and now look at one or two others. Here's a nice pink one which is Ilostra narvicensis. There's a whole lot of forms which are close to Ilostra spegaziniana with names like Gibulosa and Mamilosa, Variety Orientalis and Occidentalis, and so on. As we move down, we get to one or two slightly unusual plants. That's Ilostra tuberosa. And then there's a couple of big flowered ones here, Ilostra tarvitensis. And there's also Ilostra tarigensis next to it. Here's a, another form of tarigensis. Ilostra fusca has quite tight spines, very distinctive flowers, and then a very dark one, Ilostra fulvicetta. Ilostra vulpina or walteri is a bit of an odd one out. Ilostra schatzliana is quite a variable species with quite neat spines, green stigmas as you can see. And we move on to Ilostra albopectinata which looks pretty similar. Usually red flowered but can be orange flowered. And then a whole load of forms of Ilostra heliosa which is characterized by very tight spines. Many are red flowered, some are orange flowered, some have got quite dark bodies, some have got quite pale bodies in comparison. This is variety Teresae, which is spinier, or the spines stick out a bit more perhaps I should say. This is a very unusual white flowered one. And then there are all these very tight spined forms, which even not in flower are pretty impressive. We now move on to Ilostra subthatiana, which is quite like Schatzliana. It's a bit hard to tell where one stops and another starts. A few of them have got these very nice stripy flowers, look. 
We next move on to a whole group of plants which are closely related, which you could say a subspecies of Ilostra atrovirans. Relatively large bodied and large tubercles. Some have got green stigmas, orangey flowers perhaps, rather than deep red. And then we start moving on to forms of Ilostra pygmaea. This is Mudenensis, which has got very large bodies for Ilostra pygmaea and quite pale flowers. This one's a bit special in that the flowers are a bit stripy. There's Ilostra pygmaea variety crassa, which has got quite characteristic spination. Flower colour can vary a bit. There are one or two forms that are quite unusual here. The botanists would have you believe these are all one species, but it's hard to really believe that when you look at the huge variation in them. This one's quite characteristic, Ilostra friedrichiana, or Pygmaea variety friedrichiana. Here's one not quite so floriferous, and you can see it's got very white spines that stick out, quite fat bodies. This form is sometimes called Hargii, relatively smaller bodies and pink flowers. Then we've got Knizii or Diaciana with yellow flowers as well. And if we move on, you'll see there's Coloria, usually quite small bodied, although the one at the front's quite a large bodied form. And then we have here some more typical ones. All of them have these quite dark purpley red flowers. This is quite a, a nice one, no special name on it, but quite an unusual flower colour. And as we progress down, you'll see quite a few different ones with many different flower colours. This one was given the name Lanosiflora. A lot of them have woolly bud buds or flower tubes. This is quite a distinctive form with paler insides to the flowers than outsides. This is Ilostra. Pygmaea variety Aurorensis. A new variety here. Some more Aurorensis types there, but also some quite different lo looking ones here. Quite a few Ilostras have these straw coloured outer petals, which makes them particularly attractive, I think. Others have paler centres to the flowers, like this one, which again is quite an attractive feature. You can see, again, there's this tremendous variation. We now come on to another set of plants which tend to go under the name of Ilostra steinmanii and related names. The main difference between these and Pygmaea is that the spines tend to stick out more rather than be tightly pressed to the bodies, but otherwise quite similar looking plants. But again, you can see there's quite a big variation in the flower colour. Again, they tend to be more orangey than bright red, but uh, you can see that some of the forms have got quite small dark bodies, others have got much bigger, paler bodies. I'll quickly pass over this section, which is a few hybrids. To be honest, hybrids are not my favourites, but uh, I'll show you now one plant that is definitely one of my favourites, and this is a form of oculata or oianthema and it's got these very dark stamens and the flowers are truly superb with dark outsides to the petals which go to a lighter colour in the centre. There's quite a few other plants rather like this. This has various names, oianthema variety tilcarensis or fisheriana and you can get red flowered forms larger bodied forms and smaller bodied forms and so on. We then move on to Einsteinii which is characterized by yellow flowers although you can find the odd plant which has got orange flowers. This is a more typical color. Many of them have got long spines some of them have got quite long dark spines. You can also find what forms with short white spines or long white spines and 
This form is generally called auriflora, uh, or, or albilongi setter is another name that's used. But you can see they're not only white spines, some of these long spines can have quite different colours. And here's a red form of auriflora, just to confuse matters. Another group of plants is Ilostra nigricans, quite spiny, nigricans meaning going black. Many of them have got quite dark bodies as you can see here. Uh, that's a pretty typical looking plant there. And then finally, a few sort of oddballs that haven't been named or have recently been named. This is Ilostra malochii, usually yellow flowered, but very strongly tuberculate and very spiny. There is a white flowered form. This is Ilostra marii. And this is a species that doesn't have a name. And that's about it. So, I hope you can see from all those flowers why this is one of my favourite genera. The British cactus and succulent